Hello guys, this is Pavel Oskorov from Laravel Daily and YouTube channel Laravel Business. Today I want to talk about bugs, not in Laravel specific, but in general, how to fight bugs, how to prevent them, because this is the worst thing that can happen to our software. So I have 10 tips for you, 5 things you can do before the bug happens and 5 things what you can do after that. So let's dive into that. Number one is what you can do before the bug happens is you have to think about edge cases. Whatever you develop or your uh, colleagues uh, develop uh, the code, you have to think about what can go wrong. Uh, it partly can be prevented uh, with TDD, just thinking about test first. I will talk about that a little later. But uh, think about what uh, users can do differently than, than you think. Uh, like input something wrong, something uh, like reload page where it shouldn't be reloaded, something like that. So think before you deploy and then like that time will, will actually uh, even up in the end. So that's number one thing deeper, S like simple, right? <laughs> okay, number two is uh, environments for testing. So in, in terms of environments, uh, the theory says that you have to have local environment for your development, then you have to have testing environment for developer testing, like within your team, then you have staging environment for testing with client, and then you have production to, to like uh, go live, basically. So this actually helps. Uh, even when you are doing it alone, uh, like a freelancer or one developer, uh, to have a staging environment outside of your computer, like somewhere on DigitalOcean or whatever it, it costs, like not a lot these days. So to test it outside of your environment, that's really, really helpful. So if you, uh, if you stick to that four or three levels of environment, at least local staging and uh, development and uh, production, sorry, then, then you will prevent a lot of bugs before they happen on production. Because if they happen on staging, it doesn't really matter. It's not live yet. So that's actually the goal, to fail, but on staging. So that's number two, environments. Number three is, as I mentioned, testing and TDD, like uh, uh, whether those tests would prevent bugs or your thinking test first would prevent the bug. Personally, I'm not a big fan of TDD and testing because in my experience, you have to be really good at writing tests and architecturing the project to actually uh, make it helpful. Usually what, what people do is write tests like test if something is created or test if something is okay and in those simple cases it's perfectly fine but it doesn't actually prevent those edge cases bugs which you can just uh, which you don't think about like users or clients do something really differently and you cannot prevent those edge cases from happening unless uh, you think about all edge cases up front, which is a really difficult thing to do and it would take enormous amount of time usually. So doing tests first or writing tests, uh, it's helpful only uh, if you are really good at that, if you have level of, uh, of writing tests and, and, and architecture. So it's, it's a personal thing. And uh, for some projects, it does make sense, for, for others it doesn't, so just uh, stick to your procedure in terms of TDD. So that's number three. Uh, number four is uh, notifications about bug, about bug actually happened. Uh, usually Laravel, of course, uh, it adds uh, lines and information to Laravel log files, whether it's one file or by dates. It depends on your config, but uh, what usually uh, what uh, recently appeared are, are services to actually uh, log the bugs and notify. Uh, within our team at Laravel Daily, we use a thing called Bug Snag, and it's really great. I mean, for like twenty nine dollars a month, I think um, it's not a lot, but it it saves a lot of time with catching the bug. What's great about it is you don't have to search uh, within like thousands of lines in Laravel log. Uh, you get notifications via email, Slack, Trello, whatever, it depends on your settings. And then you actually can click and every bug has a, like, a unique link and you have, the, uh, have the, all the data uh, around that bug happen actually. So user session requests, uh, everything like anything you can possibly have information within Laravel, um, Bugsnag will show it. And uh, so, so I totally recommend to prevent um, 
like it doesn't prevent bug from happening, but it notifies you as soon as possible, and it's better be you than than the client. So developer has to be notified first. And in ideal scenario, with uh, whenever a client comes to you like, hey, there's a bug there, you are already on it fixing or already have fixed it. So that's the, that would make the best impression on client. So be sure to be notified about bugs, especially on production, uh, before they actually happen. So that's number four notifications. And number five, you have to decide who's in charge of fixing the bugs. So whenever the bug happens, within your team or within between you and client, you have to know the procedure. Uh, how it's it's not that simple to be honest. Uh, so who does the fix? Then how it is deployed to like to production? Whether it uh, should pass any tests or any staging environments? And how critical are the bugs? And what is the notification like time? When when do you have to react? Is it within like an hour or 24 hours or whatever. So people have to know about it. And within your team, for example, if you have three people or five people, who is responsible, who is on duty, so to speak, or like who's on duty on weekend, for example, or at night or whatever. So you have to decide and people have to know uh, who's responsible, basically. So that's five things what you can do before the bug happens. I will repeat them quickly. So think deeper about edge cases first, then use environments for testing, then uh, use test automatic tests or TDD, that's your kind of your call, uh, then uh, use notifications, for example, bug snack, and decide who's in charge of fixing the bugs. Now, if something went wrong and the bug actually happened on production, what to do then? Uh, so tip number one is don't panic, because panic doesn't help. Even if the bug is on production, even if the client is in panic mode and shouting with like explanation marks and uh, like uh, calling you, uh, don't panic. First, you have to fix stuff, and then you can uh, like blame someone and uh, like uh, deal with the situation. So, tip number one: don't panic. And tip number two, actually related: don't search for who is to blame. Whether it's yourself or another developer or the client did something wrong or server failure, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter who is at fault. It will actually matter in time. So if uh, if you see that the same person uh, is actually causing bugs again and again, then you have to talk to him. Or is it yourself? If you see that that something is failing like constantly, for example, server environment, then you have to change your hosting provider or like uh, switch from deployment uh, manually to something like Envoy. Uh, so search for patterns, look for patterns after things appearing at least twice or three times. But if it just if it's just one time failure, just don't blame anyone. And even if there is someone to blame, like really clearly, if one of your developers failed, don't uh, don't shout at them. Basically, <laughs> just uh, ask ask. Um, from another angle, so what could be done to prevent that from happening again? So people have to learn, they have to adapt to changes, and they have to prevent the bugs next time. So tip number two, don't search for who is to blame. Uh, tip number three, don't fix the bug directly on production. Um, that's kind of, um, kind of an often thing to happen. If it's really on fire, you have to fix it on production and you don't have to go through all the environments, testing and stuff like that. It depends actually on a bug. If it's really like losing money with every second, if it's that type of bug, only then I'm actually, I, I allow you, I kind of, yeah, I allow to fix it on production. Otherwise, it has to go through all the like staging environment testing and only then merging into production and going live. Otherwise, if you go directly into production and fix stuff into your master branch or even worse, SSH into the server and just uh, edit the file manually, then you'll have to uh, spend more time merging stuff, uh, looking at what could go wrong. It could actually potentially cause more bugs uh, and it's totally unpredictable. So please, 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 uh, test first on your local staging and of course test on production but afterwards. So that's tip number three, don't fix the bug on production. Um, yeah, tip number four is basically related, I've written it down, it's, it's basically the same thing, fix the bug and then test on staging. Uh, so that that's what should happen. Uh, and tip number five, tip uh, the, the last thing is analyze. 
analyze why the bug happened after all the shitstorm and all the fires are down. Uh, just sit down with yourself or with the people who are related and responsible and analyze what could go wrong in the future potentially from that area and what can you do to prevent it. Maybe uh, people have to learn something, like read some articles or blogs or books or whatever. Uh, maybe uh, people need to basically test more. Like usually, usually the fault is on developer who didn't test something. So uh, maybe he had a rough day or sleepless night. For example, I have a small daughter and uh, like eight eight months eight months old, and I. In the morning, I often am still kind of half awake, so that could be a potential cause of bugs or mistakes. So anything, everything has a reason. So go for that reason, find it, analyze it, and uh, prevent bugs from happening. So that's basically it. Simple human tips outside of Laravel world, but can be also used within Laravel world. I hope it's helpful, and I hope you'll have less bugs in your production. And uh, the thing is you have to constantly adapt, constantly evolve, and it's not a one-time thing to prevent the bugs. You have to constantly fight that. And good luck in that fight, and please follow the YouTube channel Laravel Business or our blog at laravelldaily.com slash blog. See you next time, guys.